Hi everyone. A couple of days ago, I launched this frame. This frame is called the AOS 5. It's a lightweight five inch freestyle frame. The frame itself weighs 115 grams and it's designed for an all up weight of 500 to 550 grams without a GoPro and maybe a little bit over 600 grams if you decide to run a GoPro. A lot of people are really interested in the black box log analysis of this frame because I've used finite element simulation methods to try and improve the vibration performance of the frame as well as improve its strength and reduce its weight. So today I'm going to be taking you through a black box analysis of the AOS 5. We're going to be looking at that black box and comparing it to how uh, it performs in a harmonic response simulation that I've done. And I'm also going to be showing you how, if you'd like to try the frame out, um, you can order it today. So let's get into it. So before I jump into the black box analysis, I want to be really upfront with you about the test conditions under which I took these logs. So this was smooth freestyle flying with flips and rolls, but no super aggressive prop wash moves, no very sharp pylon turns, no big split S's or um, other moves where you're going to get a lot of prop wash. I was running FX S3 props. Um, and they were fresh on for the flight. I was running 3B Hobby, 3BT, 2306 motors, 1700 kV, and I was flying on 6S. Now, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with uh, 3BT motors, they're a budget motor. It's a $13 motor. So, um, you know, they're a good $13 motor, but they're perhaps not as smooth as you might expect from uh, a much more expensive motor. I was flying default beta flight PIDs and filters. And the log that I'm looking at here was about three and a half minutes long. And we're looking at the whole log. Um, I have not trimmed it at all. The all up weight of the quad when I was flying uh, dry, it was 337 grams. And with the battery, 535 grams. And I wasn't running a GoPro. So with that all out of the way, let's jump in and look at the logs. So let's look at the roll axis first. And I was really happy when I saw this log because it's a really quiet roll axis, particularly for a quad uh, of this sort of weight class. There's a little bit of prop wash just below 100 hertz, and that's to be expected when you're running default PIDs and filters on beta flight. They're not as aggressive as they could be. Uh, we're going to be fixing that in another video where I talk you through tuning the AOS 5 and getting the best possible performance out of the frame. You can see that we have three motor bands, the first three harmonics of the motor frequencies, and that really there's not much in the way of resonant activity going on at all with this frame. And that's really what I was hoping for because that's what I had aimed for in the design, was really to minimize the amount of frame resonance that occurred within the design. But all frames have a resonance, and I've shown the first five resonant modes that I think are the most relevant um, here on this slide. We can see that the first four resonant modes are some of the resonant modes that you might be used to seeing if you've watched some of my other harmonic analysis videos. We've got one where the motors are moving alternately, one where they're moving up and down together, and then one rolling mode where one set of motors is moving up while the other set is moving down and the quad is rolling from left to right. And also a pitching mode where the front motors are rising up and the back motors are dropping down together. But what's really great to see and what I'm really happy to see from this analysis is that the first torsional mode where the motors are twisting on the ends of the arms doesn't occur at around 200 hertz, which is what you, you see for most typical frames. It occurs at 500 hertz, so we've been able to more than double the resonant frequency of the vibration by switching to this triangular truss structure for the arms. The other resonant frequencies are also quite a bit higher than you might expect to see with some other frame designs, and that's mainly to do with the fact that I've been able to save quite a lot of weight in this design by using finite element methods to cut out the plates. And I've used some of that weight that I've saved to actually run a six millimeter thick arm. And you might think that an extra millimeter on the thickness of the arm wouldn't make that much difference to its stiffness. 
But because the stiffness of a beam in bending is proportional to the cube of its thickness, you actually get around a 70% improvement in stiffness from moving from five to six millimeters. So it makes a really big difference. So if we look at pitch now, we see that it's really a similar story to what we saw on the roll axis. We can still see um, some of the motor bands, although the higher harmonics are less pronounced on pitch than on roll. And there's really very little in the way of resonant activity in the area that we would be most concerned about, which is from about 200 hertz up to about 400 hertz. So um, I'm really happy to say that I think the AOS 5 is performing really well here, particularly given that it's a lightweight five inch frame and that that class of frame typically has worse resonant performance than a heavier frame. The yaw axis for the AOS 5 looks really quiet. The yaw axis tends to be quieter than pitch and roll. It will be interesting to see if when we tune this quad and we increase the PID gains and those motors respond more aggressively to uh, control the attitude of the quad in the air, whether that increases the amount of noise that we see in the yaw axis. But even if it does increase the noise slightly, we're still way below the level where we need to worry um, about any sort of uh, issues with, with the gyro signal. I hope you found that analysis interesting. It was quite a quick analysis really because the AOS 5 doesn't have much in the way of problematic frame resonance behavior to analyze. Most of what you're seeing in the logs is the raw motor vibration that's coming from the motors. And that has much more to do with how well balanced the motors are than anything else. In a future video, I'm gonna be doing my perfect AOS 5 build where I use some much more premium motors and hopefully they're a lot smoother and produce a lot less vibration and maybe we can improve the performance uh, in the black box logs even further. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. If you'd like to learn more about the design of the AOS 5, I'm gonna put a link down in the video description where I talk you through every part of the design. I'm also going to show you now a website that I've got for the frame where you can see some more information and if you'd like to get involved and try out the frame for yourself um, where you can actually order the frame. I've made a small website aosrc.com I'll put a link for that down in the video description. It's got some more information about the frame and it's also got some information about the approach that I took to design the frame. If you'd like to try the frame out for yourself you can buy it direct from CNC Madness there are a couple of versions, a standard version and a premium version, which has all countersunk screws for the top and bottom plate. A big part of this for me is gathering feedback and suggestions from everyone in the community on how I can make the AOS 5 even better. So please leave your questions, your thoughts and your suggestions down below and I'll try and respond to as many as I can. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.